Hey everyone, Brayden here coming to you with a breaking Disney news update. Talk about out of nowhere, Disney's just announced they're embarking on a new project where they are going to be bringing master plan communities across the United States featuring Disney creative and storytelling so Disney fans will never have to leave the Disney bubble. These communities are branded as Story Living by Disney and it is the newest project for Disney's parks experiences and products division and there's a lot to get to here because really a lot of it is just branding it's just marketing in reality I don't believe Disney will be building anything here at all what it seems their plan is here is to collaborate with giant property developers funded by multinational investment firms lending Disney's name Disney entertainment Disney customer service and creative consultations from the Imagineers as a way to bring in revenue on Disney's end and on the property developers end this extra brand Branding will likely push people over the top into buying a property here versus any of the other overpriced cookie cutter communities like this popping up all over the nation. So we'll get into the nitty gritty with all of that. I've been digging into this all afternoon. Specifically today, Disney announced the first story living community, a desert oasis called Cotino, the aesthetics of which I'm actually quite a fan of. Located on pristine, undeveloped desert land in the Palm Springs city of Rancho Mirage, California. In Disney's promotional materials, you can see we have some classic Disney style concept art we see they use for the parks, depicting here a desert village with a lagoon in the middle, very reminiscent in appearance to Disney Springs, the shopping village we have here at Walt Disney World, just at a much larger scale and surrounded by residential properties. On that lagoon, you might spot there is a beach in the middle of a desert, no less, which will be accessible to the community's private club, as well as the public public if they pay for a day pass, according to Parks Chairman Josh Tomorrow, who was the primary talking head in the promotional materials we got today for this whole deal. And while not saying so explicitly, the way Tomorrow is making this out, an innovative Disney community for Disney fans, what are Disney fans thinking of? When they hear that, they're thinking of Walt's experimental prototype community of Tomorrow. Others point to Disney-developed Celebration Florida. But this project is not those. In the case of this project, according According to this first report out from USA Today, quote, despite bearing its name, Disney will not own the communities or be the developer of record, nor will it be building or selling the homes. So it seems to me what you're looking at in Disney's art is any one of these non-Disney master plan communities benefiting from the addition of Disney's name on the sign, Disney's operations personnel, as well as some creative advice from Disney. Another piece of art we got, which Damaro touched on, is the clubhouse. The community has this club membership, as I mentioned, where you get access to the beach and other things like that, and you will have this Disney design club house themed as a modern day creative studio. I spy some mid-century style furniture. I have to say, I think it looks quite nice. There will be a town center in the Disney plan community of Cotino featuring some rather odd looking glass or acrylic things in the middle, some sort of accent things you got there. This is the one area we got art of that I don't really like the look of too much. So far, we know very little about the residential properties you're going to have here. The residential properties themselves, how many of them will be rentals, how many will actually be for sale. What we do know is there will be 1,900 housing units, including condominiums, single family homes, and estates. I feel like lately we've had a lot of these totally goofy kind of announcements. Remember that bizarre Disneyland expansion thing Disney did to create political pressure and stuff like that? And CEO Bob Chapek, he keeps saying metaverse every five seconds. They got to reprogram him. He just keeps saying it. Nobody can even explain what the metaverse is or why anyone would want it. Here we have another very vague sort of weird announcement where Disney's trying to diversify. They're trying to get into all these different things, all these things that are trendy and popular right now. Disney's exact stake in this Cortino place is not disclosed. Literally speaking, there are disclosures in Disney's announcement. They say they aren't building or selling these properties. The USA Today article goes so far as to say Disney won't even be owning any of this stuff. So is this a licensing deal? Is this an Imagineering consulting gig for the developer, which is DMB Development? The property owner 
owner, according to DMB's site, is EC Rancho Mirage Holdings. They're the ones who own this land. Who owns all these funds and things and the developers and the holding companies? Who knows what's going on here? What stake, what profit share Disney will have remains to be seen. But this isn't Epcot. We do know that. This is a normal community of cookie cutter properties popping up all over the country that can be quickly expanded, be made into rental properties, generating huge cash flow and milking middle class families of their income while owning nothing. It's not made clear in Disney's announcement what their stake in this thing is. It's very strange. Some other miscellaneous details we have here. DMB Development is planning a luxury hotel on the site, so you will be able to visit this desert town when it's complete, when that'll be. It's gonna be far, far into the future. This is still in the planning stages. Something super strange, Disney cast members will be handling the day-to-day -day operations, including customer service and entertainment production at the community, which thickens the plot even more. If Disney was just loaning their name in creative, like this sort of seems like, why are they paying employees to work at the property for the property owner? Disney must have pretty big monetary ambitions here to spend money on personnel, which we know they hate to do, what the behind the scenes relationships are here, how Disney is going to make money, I don't know, but Disney sure knows. If I had to guess, since Disney's name pushes people into overpaying for stuff, hence why they're marketing it as a city for Disney fans, perhaps Disney will be generating revenue off the top of rental properties, real estate purchases, profit share agreements with establishments in the town center, all sorts of retail, restaurants, all sorts of companies will want to be involved with this because because it has the Disney name on it. It's supposed to be something that's very high society. So Disney might take advantage of that in the contract, sort of like the model Disney has with Disney Springs at Walt Disney World. Again, these are all guesses on my part because the business end of this has not been explained to shareholders yet. Right now, it's all PR. Disney owned ABC as a show called Good Morning America, which basically serves as Disney's propaganda arm. They just blatantly shill whatever the new thing is that Disney wants to talk about. That's where a lot of Disney's own public relations and a lot of their marketing, that's where all that messaging is pushed out where they show whatever Disney wants to show. They're branding this as a place for Disney fans. Uh, which has led to a lot of controversy online today about people talking about Disney adults and how this place is going to be literally hell. But how this will pan out, what all that means, who knows? I might sound a little cynical here, uh, that's for sure. It's really just me scrutinizing this project because Disney isn't giving us all the details. It does sound sort of odd, so I really want to scrutinize it, be quite critical here of what we're hearing and try to figure out what exactly is going on, what's the truth in all of this. But one thing I actually don't like is the invoking Walt stuff that they're doing. Parks Chairman John Josh tomorrow, he said, quote, while these story living communities are not Epcot, they share that same spirit. This is something that Walt would have been all over, end quote. Walt would have been all over putting his name on someone else's development project on someone else's property? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure Walt wanted a community owned and operated and controlled, even at a governmental level, by Disney. Done his way, unlike anything that had ever been done before. And furthermore, in the video Disney released, part of the sales pitch is Walt used to live near here and used to escape to this desert. Listen to this. There is an incredible natural beauty in the Coachella Valley landscape. And you can see why Walt Disney used to escape to the desert to dream the impossible. So the pitch is Walt used to go out here to appreciate the natural beauty of this untouched, majestic desert landscape that you have in California. And now, as I understand, you are going to pave over 618 acres of it for the purpose of generating additional revenues for your shareholders, all the while saying, this is what Walt would have wanted. Unbelievable, man. So that is our first look at Disney's Cotino property. Again, yeah, I am being critical. I just wish Disney would do more stuff like Golden Oak, which is on their property. It's their thing. Or make something like Epcot, something truly innovative, something truly different. I will say, though, even though I don't think this is Walt tier stuff, I do see some potential here, of course, insofar as making money goes for the shareholder. And I wonder, you know, Disney's alluding to putting these up all over the country. In Florida, at Lake Nona, Disney is planning a billion dollar regional complex Imagineering is moving to, which we recently made a mini doc on that you should check out. That is a planned community 
and surrounding it are even more planned communities where there's going to be tons and tons of housing. It's all developed by the Tavistock Development Company. Disney could get into one of these branding and design deals with them and have Disney themed communities with that extra Disney touch in Orlando right by the airport, right by Walt Disney World, right by the regional complex that they're building. That's the move because there are people actually want to live in the Disney bubble. If I were to live in California, in the California desert, I would want to live in the California desert. I don't know about you guys. I don't want to be in a Disney themed community in the California desert. The desert itself is God's theming and it's more than enough, I think. Let me know what you guys think. So something like this, I think if you put something like this in Florida, that would be a huge boon, uh, maybe in the southeast part of Orlando where you have all these master plan communities in the works. But this is strictly business. Disney's going to lend their name to property developers they like and have interpersonal relationships with. So where we'll see this go next, we'll have to see, but I really hope it is something in Florida because that would definitely be a good idea. Let me know what you guys think. Should I be more excited about this? I love Epcot. I love Walt's vision of the future. This, even as Chairman DeMauro admitted, really isn't that exactly. And it doesn't even seem to be about innovation. I feel like innovation is just a buzzword now. There is nothing innovative about master plan communities with clubs and a town center. These are a dime a dozen. These are huge business right now. They're popping up all all over the country. Disney wants to diversify into all sorts of trendy things. They're talking about getting into sports betting and things like this. Chapek talks about how they need to chase the trends or the company will die. There's a third option, buddy, make the trends. But that requires a level of vision, humility, and altruistic ambition the company no longer seems to possess. It's ballooned to such a scale where its only interest is perpetuating itself as this massive media conglomerate, this massive synergy machine, as Bob Chapek himself called it on the last earnings call, where not only are you going to be turning on the TV and seeing Disney stuff, paying Disney for things like Disney Plus and all sorts of entertainment, but also in the future, you might be living inside of a Disney community if you choose to invest in a community like this. It's quite a strange time. Follow the money. It's all about the bottom line. If you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe with those notifications on. I'll talk to you soon. This is Brayden. Have a magical day.